Hello, welcome to another School of Surgery podcast. This one follows on from the previous podcast about right hemicolectomy and uh, the principles of it explained then. And so today we're going to talk about left hemicolectomy. So just to go over the underlying principles which we covered uh, in more detail in the other right hemicolectomy podcast, um, with a cancer what we need to do is remove the primary tumour completely, but also to stage the tumour and to get local and regional control, we need to remove the lymph nodes which happen to travel with the named arteries. So here's the colon and the blood supply, and we talked a lot more about blood supply in the right hemicolectomy podcast, so I won't go over that again, but we're going to talk about left hemicolectomy today. Um, this is uh, removing a tumour that is on the left side of the colon, so above the rectum, but on the left-hand side of the colon. And if you remember that the part of the bowel that we're interested in is supplied by the inferior mesenteric artery, which is the artery of the hind gut, comes off the aorta here about the L3 vertebral level. <clears throat> and then after a couple of centimetres or so, the inferior mesenteric artery splits quite often into a, a left colic or ascending colic branch, which moves to the uh, descending colon here and up towards the splenic flexure where it anastomoses with the SMA via the middle colic and then branches continue to be given off to the sigmoid colon and eventually the inferior mesenteric artery ends up as a superior rectal artery which is the main artery supplying the rectum. So then if we have a tumour say here, so sort of rather arbitrary place for it, uh, which is somewhere in the descending colon or the sigmoid colon you can see that any lymph node drainage would go off along here towards inferior mesenteric artery. So when we're resecting it, what we want to do is to mobilise the left colon. So that means divide the peritoneum lateral to the left colon and swing it over to make it a midline structure again. We're, depending on the anatomy and how the person's made, we may have to free up the splenic flexion of transverse colon. We want to make sure that we can see the ureter and the gonadal vessels travelling down here and around the pelvis into the bladder and then down to the uh, down to the gonads and uh, and preserve uh, those two structures and also just to be a little bit careful of the iliac a little bit further back but uh, can in especially in thin people be uh, present in front of you very quickly and so doing this then so there's the lymph nodes going up there so what we want to do is free it up and then divide the inferior mesenteric artery reasonably close to his root, no particular advantage going flush with the aorta. And then also we want to divide the inferior mesenteric vein which travels on the colonic side of the artery and uh, goes up here to meet the splenic vein coming down here uh, to form the portal vein. So we divide the inferior mesenteric vein around there as well. And then at uh, a convenient place where it still looks pink and we've got blood supply coming around here on the marginal artery of Drummond and astomosing from the superior mesenteric artery, we can divide across the, the bowel there, I often do that with the stapler, and then what I most normally do and what other people often do is to divide just across at the junction of the rectum and the sigmoid colon, and then all this bit goes off to pathology and they tell us what the T stage is and the N stage is, and if you look back at the right hemicolectomy podcast we talk more about those. And so now we're left with two ends, so if we draw that uh, not very good at drawing, so there's a terminal ilium, cecum, round to the, it's even worse than normal, round to the um, bit where we've chopped off there, and then there's the rectum there, out to the anus. And these two things are stapled, closed. I mean, what we want to be able to do is to put that onto there. Now some people sew that, uh, that's, that's fine. All you have to do is to be, hold the two edges of the bowel together without tension, uh, for a few days until some scar tissue forms in between those. And the most important thing about um, anastomotic healing is blood supply, really. So as long as you've got a good blood supply at either end, then you'll be okay. It doesn't matter how you join them together, really. But what I often do is use uh, a stapling device, a circular stapling device, to join that to that. So if we look at the proximal end of the colon here, what it will do is put a, the end of the stapling device in here, there are different ones available, this is the, the kind I most often use, like that, and then we 
tie a purse string suture around there so it comes nice tight there's the outside of the thing looking from the end now the spike on the thing sticks through there like that and, a, and there's a purse string suture around there and so you have muscle and mucosa in there so when it when the stapling device cuts it will cut out a donut shape a bit like a pastry cutter and then the staples will join the two ends together and then through the rectal stump we introduce the stapling device through the anus up to the top of the rectal stump there's a stapling device and there's a spike on the one I use that comes up through here and then that joins onto there so the next thing we have is there's the colon there's the top of the rectum like this and there's the stapling device like this and the that's now fully engaged like that and so the staples get fired or the, there's a knife a circular knife that cuts this bit out like this and then staples join these bits together so that we have something that then is achieving continuity like this out to the anus with the staples holding that bit together again and then what you most often want to perform really is an underwater test so you blow some air in through the anus uh, using a bladder syringe or something whilst holding that closed there and if there's no bubbles come out a bit like mending a puncture on the bike you know that the join is sound what you want to also make sure there's no tension on this joint to pull it apart and that when you put this anvil in this end that there's no uh, there's a good blood supply and so a little little bit of bleeding when you cut the uh, staple ends off and that's it for left hemicolectomy um, you can uh, visit school of surgery on facebook and like as you can see us and follow us on podomatic or you can download uh, this and other podcasts by subscribing to our feed on iTunes search for School of Surgery.